As we all know, the foundation of Judaism is our Bible, the Tanakh. But truth be told, the real foundation are the Chamishei Chumshei Torah, the five books of Moses. Because all of the other books of the Bible, after the five books of Moses, are basically only there to reinforce the five books of Moses. There were not any new laws, any new instructions that were given by God to the Jewish people after the five books of Moses. Not one prophet really is teaching us anything new. The prophets were basically there to scold us when we weren't living up to the teachings in the five books of Moses. So the epicenter, the the core of our faith of Judaism is found in the revelation that was given to God by God to Moses at Mount Sinai. Now, this revelation, this foundation of Judaism is so solid, it is so solid that both Christianity and Islam base themselves upon the revelation of God at Mount Sinai. They don't question it. They accept it as a historical verity. And they simply say that either there was more to come, Islam questions whether or not the Jews accurately preserved what was revealed by God previously, but both of these major, what are often called daughter religions to Judaism, accept unflinchingly and unreservedly the truth of the revelation of the Torah at Mount Sinai by God to Moses. Now, there is something unique about this revelation at Mount Sinai, very unique among all religions in the world. Every single other religion basically begins with an individual who claims to have had a revelation from God. It doesn't make much sense to start a religion and claim you just made it up all by yourself. So every religion, if they have any brains, are going to try to give some strength to the claim that their religion is true. And so that strength is the claim that this religion comes from God. We received it from God. But it's always an individual who claims that they received a revelation. Muhammad claims that the revelation came through the prophet, through the, through the angel Gabriel. So that's the claim of Islam. It wasn't even directly from God, but that the angel Gabriel was the one that revealed the Quran to Muhammad. And in Christianity, basically the claim is that the authors of the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, as well as the other writers in the Christian scriptures, mainly the Apostle Paul, that they didn't just make up these writings. The claim is that these were inspired, revealed by God, and that these writings have the authority of divine revelation. Judaism is not based upon the claim that Moses simply claimed that God spoke to him at Mount Sinai. That is not the narrative. The storyline is not that Moses comes down from the mountain and claims that God spoke to him. In the 19th chapter of the book of Exodus, verse 9, God says to Moses the following, Behold, I come to you in the thickness of the cloud, so that the people will hear as I speak to you, and they will also believe in you forever. So the important difference between the foundation of Judaism and every other religion is that every other religion is built upon a private revelation where the originators, the founders of those religions, make the claim that God spoke to them. And basically, it's take it or leave it. Judaism is based upon the claim, the story, that God spoke to Moses in the presence, in the hearing of the three million people who came out of Egypt with Moses. We're told there were about 600,000 men between the ages of 20 and 60, and if you do your extrapolations, it amounts to approximately 3 million people. 
It's very difficult, it's impossible, to fake, to fabricate a public revelation. You can't fabricate a public event. Because hundreds of years later, people would be reading in the Bible that God spoke to your ancestors at Mount Sinai. Now, if that happened, if it happened, that God spoke to people at Mount Sinai, that's a pretty amazing event. It's a pretty incredible experience. And you could rest assured that people would tell that to their children. If their children were not old enough or their children weren't born yet, they would say, listen, I mean, I did a lot of cool things in my lifetime. But if you want to know the most amazing thing that happened to me, it's when we stood at Mount Sinai and heard God speak to Moses. And there were three million of us. It was amazing, incredible. Now, if this did not happen, if God did not speak to Moses and every single other person there heard it, and then Moses just writes it down, that God spoke to me in the hearing of all of you people, so a generation or two or three or four later, people would read these accounts and it would say that every single person at Mount Sinai heard God speak. And the reader would say, really? My parents never told me that. So if it did not happen, people would not accept the text as it exists. The fact that we never had in the history of Judaism We've had people who questioned rabbinic authority, people who questioned the oral Torah. We never had in Judaism a movement of people that questioned the revelation at Sinai. No one ever said in Jewish history, until maybe 200 years ago, we let, went for over 3,000 years where no one questioned the event of the revelation, the public revelation at Mount Sinai. And this is repeated many times, and God goes on to say in the book of Deuteronomy that no nation will ever claim that they received a public revelation. God says specifically, this is a unique experience in world history, and no one else is going to make the claim that they received a public revelation because it cannot be fabricated. And so the rock-solid foundation of Judaism is the public revelation to the entire Jewish people at Mount Sinai.